Many of you have asked me which book box subscriptions are worth it and which ones aren't. Which ones do I suggest for what type of reader you are? So I am here to give you all the details. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, like I said in the intro, we are going to be diving into all of the book box subscriptions that I have subscribed to, whether I am a current subscriber or not, and I'll give you my thoughts on do I like it, what type of reader would this suit, and why am I not a subscriber anymore to those. Before we get into the video, please make sure that you always like and subscribe to my videos and always check my description box down below for all of my links. Bookish Box Ambassador website is down below as well, as long as my Patreon, Pango Books account, all of my socials, my Amazon wish list, and just a whole ton of fun down there. And also make sure that you always leave me comments because I always love to hear your feedback on what videos you'd like to see next, what you are wanting me to do, and don't ever forget to head on over to my Instagram because I have been putting up some stories from time to time, asking for book recommendations for videos or different things. So come participate over there and let's have a good time. So let's get into all of these book box subscriptions. I am going to start off with the ones that I am currently no longer a subscriber to, and I'll tell you why also. I'm going to keep everything a little brief, so I know that across all of these book box subscriptions that I will mention, there are multiple different levels, whether that be a book only, book and goodies box, and a YA, adult, fantasy or paranormal box. There's just so many different options. I'm only going to talk about the ones that I have personally tried out. You can go to their websites and always see what other options they have, if they have any of them. Also, there's other book boxes out there that I've never tried. So there's just a slew of things out there that I just couldn't give you my idea about. But the ones that I've subscribed to, I feel like I can give you a good, robust knowledge, I guess, on what to expect from those book boxes and which ones that they would suit for which reader. So let's just dive into the ones that I no longer subscribe to. And the one that is the most recent is Illumicrate. I used to be an Illumicrate Afterlight subscriber and a normal Illumicrate subscriber. I canceled the Afterlight subscription a couple years ago, I want to say, maybe a year and a half ago. It just wasn't a book box for me. The Illumicrate Afterlight book box used to be a every three months, a quarterly box, you would get a random romance, whether that be a rom-com, um, a literary fiction, a contemporary romance, something that is not in like the fantasy or paranormal vein. And you would also get five self-care items. And they were not in any fandom. They were just things that you could take care of yourself, have a night in, read the book, relax. They'd have bath bombs, they would have masks for your face, candles, different things like that. Now they have moved more towards, I think it's going to be every month or every other month currently, and I think they are moving to an every month thing. The books just didn't hit with me. They are romances. They are nothing but rom-coms and sports romances. And although I like to read those from time to time, my main genres are fantasy and paranormal romance. I live and breathe for those types of books. So it just... I didn't feel like constantly paying for a subscription that I wasn't even reading 75% of the time just wasn't worth my money. But it definitely would work for somebody who loves those types of romances and wants to get a book box every other month or every month where you can have just a self-care night to yourself, crack open the new book because they are stunning additions, and just kind of relax and take care of yourself. And then recently, this month actually, I canceled my Illumicrate subscription. I should only have one more box coming, which will be the May box. And going forward, I am not going to resubscribe to Illumicrate 
for what I can see in the near future. The Illumicrate box is typically a fantasy or sci-fi book. Usually skews more on the upper YA, kind of in the new adult frame. And a lot of times they don't have very much spice or none at all, which is great because if you don't like a lot of spice in your books, you would absolutely love a Lumicrate. The book and goodies box would come with, I think, five fandom bookish merch items, whether that be dagger replicas for letter openers, coffee mugs, plant containers. Sometimes you would even get book sleeves to put over your hardback so you can read those without messing up the dust jacket. A whole slew of things and from time to time they would also do a fandom neutral box that never really went towards any specific fandom like Akatar or From Blood and Ash, things like that. So if you are somebody who likes Upper YA, maybe on the verge of new adult, fantasy or sci-fi books, this would be an amazing box for you. They curate their items so good and they always make sure that the items really surround around the book and the theme for that month. I canceled because I'm no longer into YA. I don't really want to read a YA fantasy or sci-fi. I will from time to time, but I've really kind of grown out of that. And a lot of their books that they've had in the past couple months and some of the months going forward, I feel like are kind of the same, if that makes sense. They just seem they that they have the same themes or things like that. And I'm just, I want variety and Illumicrate just, I found myself selling way more of my Illumicrate books than I have any other subscription box. So I think it's not worth my money so I just cut ties, but you may love it. You can head on over to Illumicrate, check out some of their past boxes, see if it's something that you would want, and join their wait list. It didn't take me very long, maybe a month or two, to get off of the wait list, so definitely check that out if that is something that you would be interested in. All right, so let's talk about all of my subscriptions. You guys, I have to cut my subscriptions down. I have, let me count here. I have 13 active subscriptions. I am going to be canceling one of those this month, and I will talk about that. But it is currently an active subscription, so I kept it on this list. So let's just go ahead and get that one out of the way. I am a current subscriber to Fabled, which Fabled is a book box company that is based out of Australia. They just recently, in the past five or six months, acquired a warehouse in the United States where they are shipping their books, so then the U.S. subscribers aren't paying a ridiculous amount of postage to be a subscriber with them. However, that has caused so many delays. I re-signed up for them whenever they opened up their U.S. spots, and I think my first box was supposed to be January. I haven't even gotten January at all, so I felt like I was gonna, I'm gonna cut ties with them. They do offer four different book boxes, three that you can subscribe to. One of them is an add-on. So the three that they have, I was subscribed to, I think it was the Moonlight box and the Twilight box. Moonlight was a paranormal romance. Twilight was a fantasy romance subscription. So I did kind of a dual box set where I would get both of those with no goodies or anything, just the book only. Then they also have a dark romance um, subscription that you can get. The add-on is a extremely dark and disturbed dark romance that you can get. And whenever I say dark and disturbed, I'm talking like stalker romances, ones that have like a full two pages of trigger warnings. So it is an add-on. You can't subscribe to it because it is a bi-monthly book. And you need to really have no trigger warnings to want to get that because you have no idea what you're going to get whenever it comes in. So I say proceed with caution. If you are a Fabled subscriber and you want to add that on, 
go and check out their Instagram, read all about that one because it may or may not be something that you'd want to add on depending on what your trigger warnings are. However, I used to be a Fabled subscriber years ago and I would pay the ridiculous amount of money from Australia. I loved their editions, but a lot of their editions were books that I had never heard of, books that I wasn't interested in, so I canceled resubscribed again. Now I haven't received a single box and we're five months in. So I am going to be canceling my subscription before it renews. I think that if you are someone who likes a fantasy romance only box, get the Twilight. If you want paranormal romance only, get the Moonlight box. Um, you can get those as a as a duet where you can get both of them. If you like dark romance, you can get their dark romance subscription. And if you really like your disturbing dark romance, you can always get their add-on. I do highly suggest this company. They do have some downfalls to them. I have seen people have horror stories with the owner, people being blocked on the internet and stuff. So just... Go in with an open mind, but do your research before you sign up for any book box. All right, so the ones that I am active with and that I am going to continue to be active with in the foreseeable future, these are in no particular order. They are just kind of the way that they come out in the month, or if I remembered them, I was just jotting them down. So the first company is Fairy Loot. Fairy Loot has been around for a very long time. They used to have a YA book and goodies box. Now they have an adult book only subscription and they just recently in the past couple of months added on their romanticy book only subscription. I am a subscriber to all three of them. I have been a subscriber to the YA for at least four or five years. I did get the adult one whenever it first came out, so I've been a subscriber since day one, and I've been a subscriber for the Romanticy since day one. I did kind of cut back, and I just made it a YA and adult book only. I don't need the goodies. I love them. They also are just like a Lumicrate. You get five bookish items that are based around different fandoms, and they can be a slew of different things just like the Illumicrate one is. I just didn't need them. I found myself not needing 90% of it or not wanting it and trying to sell it and I just cut ties with it. I said I just want the book only. So I get book only for all three of them. The YA I am thinking about canceling because again I am not much of a YA girly. I love me a YA from time to time. Don't get me wrong. But I like my books to have a little bit more action, a little bit more spice, a little bit more grim dark. I like more mature themes is what I'm trying to say. And they curate a lot of really good books across all three of their boxes. But the YA would be a really good one for someone who is just looking for upper YA slash new adult books that are fantasy and maybe a little bit of sci-fi sprinkled in, but mainly fantasy. The adult book only box, they don't give you any other option. They are for the ones that want a lot more spice. They want mature themes. They want a whole lot of things and it is strictly fantasy as well. You may get a little bit of a sci-fi theme here or there, but it's really strictly fantasy. Then you have your Romanticy subscription, which is book only as well. I have only gotten the first box, which I don't even know if I unboxed it for April or if I have it in my closet currently, but it is Lore of the Wilds was the first one, and I feel like that's a YA Romanticy, and I'm looking more for like new adult, adult Romanticy. So I don't know. We'll see how the book box goes. I may end up canceling my Romanticy. I'm not sure. But Fairy Loot as a whole does an amazing job. They do special editions outside of their subscription. So if you're a subscriber, you get early access, which majority of their time, the special editions, they sell out before they even make it to general access. But the waiting list is pretty long. So if you want to be a Fairy Loot subscriber, you will want to head on over and get on the wait list 
as soon as possible. It may take a few months. I've seen people be on there for six or seven months before they're even able to get off of it. So make sure that you head on over there if you want to, but don't just sign up for a box, like a YA box, if you don't intend to want to keep it because you're just going to be throwing away your money. Definitely get on the wait list for the box that you currently want, and you can do the YA and adult book only combo. You can do the romanticy book only. They don't have currently where you you can get all three of them in just one payment yet so we're gonna see all right so the next one is a new recent resubscription shall we say um, it's Owl Crate and I used to be an Owl Crate YA book and goodies subscriber for a couple years a couple years ago and I ended up canceling them long ago, not because they didn't have good books. They had a great collection. They also had five bookish items that you would get in the box, just like the other ones. However, their customizations at the time, you would get like maybe a different dust jacket, maybe some foiling on the hardcover, but there really wasn't a whole lot of drastic changes or making them stand out to be beautiful and it was at the time that I was transitioning more out of YA into adult so I ended up canceling Owl Crate and they're great they're lovely I absolutely love Owl Crate and I was sad to see it go but I kept getting the same books in multiple boxes of every month and I was like I just need to cut one out you know and Owl Crate is really good again if you want the YA for people that want YA um, fantasy or sci-fi books they don't really tend to have very much heavy on the romance or the spice they do have some in there but it's not like a romanticy adult okay then they announced which I didn't even know they had came out with a adult only uh, or adult book only subscription and whenever I found that out I immediately got on the wait list and I got off of it and I think my first book was either the December or January book I am so in love with their adult book only and I'm really really happy that they have upped their game on their customizations. They now offer sprayed or stenciled edges. They offer so much things to the books where they are now a heavy competitor in the book box subscription circle. And I don't foresee me um, canceling that subscription anytime soon. I feel like they're, the picks of the books are amazing. The customizations are just absolutely stunning. Um, so I just, I really like Owl Crate. I would probably like them more than Fairy Loot at the moment because Fairy Loot is really not hitting like they used to, so we're just going to see how they do for the rest of the year. Okay, so the next one is a brand new subscription. I just got in the mail my first uh, package, and I will be unboxing it for my May unboxing, but that is the Moonlight Book Box, and they are a fantasy paranormal romance subscription. So if you want a fantasy romance or paranormal romance, and I'm talking spicy fantasy romance, head on over to check out Moonlight Book Box because I have seen their past boxes. I found them whenever I heard about special editions of Bonded by Thorns and Woven by Gold by Elizabeth Helen. You guys know I absolutely love the Beasts of the Briar series and whenever I heard there were special editions of it, which come to think of it, I think a couple months ago whenever I hauled Forged by Malice, which is the third book, I think I had said I wish a subscription company would make special editions of this book. They listened to me. I am the motivation for that, you guys. <laughs> I wish I was, but they're they're stunning. And whenever I found out that they were a subscription box, I went on to their wait list. I got off of it for May, got my first box. I have no idea what it is, so I am so anxious for the beginning of June so I can open up the box and see what I got. I'm trying not to spoil myself since it's my first box, so I can't really give you any thoughts or feelings on if the book customizations are worth it, you know, for the price, what do they give you, different things like that. So just stay updated. Just keep watching my um, book unboxings at the beginning of every month and you'll just see my thoughts on it. All right. So the next one that I am going to talk about, and Vanessa, you better listen up because you just messaged me tonight about it. 
um, and that is Paige and Wick. And this book box gives you a fantasy book and a candle and the candle is always curated around that book for the month whether it be a smell from the world or what have you it is supposed to be an experience where you sit down you light the candle and you sink into the book and it's supposed to just be a little immersive thing I a hundred percent recommend doing that because Vanessa and I are currently reading um, Fangs of War by E.J. Doble, which was the book I got at the end of last year or very beginning of this year, and we're buddy reading it because we're both doing the fantasy bingo card. It's an experience, okay? Like, if you could be in the chat whenever we're both talking about the book, you would be confused because we're confused. However, we're sticking till the end, I promise you. But the customizations on the Page and Wick are by far the most amazing customizations I have ever seen on fantasy books. They are gorgeous. They take so much time in making the stenciled edges, doing the end papers. They do come signed. And what I really like about them is most of the time they pick books that are not overly hyped, right? They are strictly fantasy books. And they did do To Bleed a Crystal Bloom uh, their first month that they did it, which was back in September, was their first month. It was a brand new book box. And then they have done just straight fantasy since. They did the Sword of Kaigen, Fangs of War, and then the newest one, I know that I just hauled it. I knew I had just hauled it. It was... Sky of Fire by Madeline Carr. Like I said, you guys, look at how stunning this is. Okay, this is a straight fantasy. They are absolutely stunning with the art and the hardcovers. So this one did come with a candle as well. This is the newest one. I think their next book in, because they are a bi-monthly, so you don't pay every month. It's like $70, I think. Um, because it comes from, like, Australia, New Zealand area. And it's, like, $70 every two months. But it's it's worth it, you guys. Absolutely worth it. They are going to be doing... Because they've been just straight fantasy since their first book was, like, a fantasy romance. Everything else has been straight fantasy. And I think House of Beating Wings by Olivia Wildenstein. You guys know I love Olivia Wildenstein. Um, is going to be the next book. So I am excited for that. I cannot wait to see what they do with that book. The Downfall to Paige and Wick. Could you believe there'd be a downfall at how amazing they are? Well, there is. The Downfall is if they do House of Beating Wings by Olivia Wildenstein, they don't continue the series. So you're only going to have that first book in those specific customizations. So that's the only thing that I don't like. Now, they may in the future change that. They may make things a lot better. I don't know. I don't know the ways of someone running a business, okay? But they did just announce Wicked Pages, I think is what it's called. And it is not going to be a subscription. It is going to be where... You can buy special editions um, whenever they release it. So they would be like, okay, Sword of Kaigen's going to be on sale May 25th at 9 a.m. So then anybody can go on. You just get in the queue. You buy it. When they sell out, they sell out. So I really like that, that they are doing a non-subscription version of special editions. And I can't wait to see what books they do. I think, who is it? Autumn? book recs or autumn book reads I think over on Instagram if you're in the book community you know who she is because she is absolutely lovely and does an amazing job at deciphering emojis and giving us pretty consistently what the books are going to be I would say she has a 99.9 percent um, ratio on guessing the correct book. So she has proven herself. She is very trustworthy. She does these bookish roundups every couple months where she goes through all the book box companies around and tells you what's been updated, what books are coming out with, the um, hints and the emojis and what she thinks it's going to be. So definitely head on over to her Instagram if 
you want any of the details and you want to know like, oh, I want to be a Page and Wick subscriber, but what books do they plan on doing for the rest of the year? Go ahead on over there and see the options that you get. But again, Page and Wick is $70 roughly US um, every two months. All right, in the same vein of a bi-monthly book box subscription, I am also a subscriber to Arcane Society, which Arcane Society is owned by the same people that do the Mystic Box and the Bell Box. So Bell Box, I think, is just contemporary rom-com romances. Mystic Box is like very dark and disturbing romances. The Arcane Society, which just started like a year and a half ago, it hasn't been going very long. I've been a subscriber since day one. They do fantasy and paranormal romance, a lot of spicy paranormal and fantasy romances. It is a bi-monthly subscription. It's $64.95 every other month. And whenever you get the subscription, it is book only. You usually get some art prints and you'll get like a pin, um, a bookish pin that you can like put on a tapestry or whatever if you wanted to for that book and you always get two books now whenever they do the series like the J. Bree series uh bonds that tie they we got the first two books in one of the subscription boxes and then later on she opened up where you could buy books three through six and get the add-on with it so you had a full complete set which you probably can't see it but it's right here so you you have that option I love it they also do special editions outside of the subscriptions like they did the fever series by Karen Marie Monning back in March so happy I got that it's books one through five and I, I love the Fever series. I actually read all 12 books and then went and read the Highlander series, which isn't really a prequel, but all of those characters come into play in the Fever series. So there's like eight of those and then go into the Fever series, which is like 12 books. But nonetheless, Arcane Society does an amazing job. They started out doing naked hardcovers that were customized, and then every once in a while they'll throw in ones that have dust jackets that are customized. They are strictly fantasy and paranormal romance, and you are going to get spice in these. So they are on the adult side. So if you are one of those girlies, go get on the wait list because I'm not going to lie. There are people that have been on the wait list for a year. So if you want to get on it, you better go sign up now. All right, the next one that I am a subscriber to is Probably Smut, which a lot of people had never heard of Probably Smut until last year whenever they did their fourth wing edition and everybody went crazy for it buying the edition for a thousand dollars off of like mercury and ebay and stuff like that blows my mind you guys blows my mind however if i had a lot of money i probably would do the same not gonna lie because it's a beautiful edition I was not a probably smut subscriber at the time unfortunately but I I'm just really happy that I got onto it because it gives you kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes you can get a sports romance. Sometimes you can get a fantasy romance. Sometimes you can get um, a contemporary romance. It just depends. Sometimes they have dark romances. And it's only $40 every month. If you get the highest tier, you get a t-shirt, you get the special edition book, an annotation kit, and a key. And it is signed with a special paperback. And sometimes it'll be a hardback. Whenever they did a Fade Inked and Blood by Daniel L. Jensen, you were able to add on um, the page overlays for $10 and they just charged you for it and they sent it to you in your box. So that was amazing. They are absolutely lovely over there. I've had no issues with anything. So if you want something that's just going to give you kind of a mixed bag and it's not too expensive, $40 a month for a t-shirt and a special edition book, will definitely be the one that you would want to go with. All right, the next one is Book of the Month. Everybody knows what Book of the Month is, I'm sure, because if you watch any of the other booktubers, they are always promoting Book of the Month, and they're wonderful. I love Book of the Month. They're very simple. They're very easy. You pay... I think it's like $15 a month. It's like $17 after taxes for one credit. 
the first of the month comes, you open up your app, you get to see their five selections, which will be a mix of genres. You can get a thriller, memoir, historical fiction, fantasy, different things like that. You scroll through. If you don't see a book that you want to pick, you can also look at their audiobook selection. If you don't see an audiobook you like, all you do is hit skip this month. They don't charge you that month, and then it starts over again the next month. You have unlimited skips, and what's really good about it is, like I said, it gives you like a mixed bag of a selection, but also every year, if you get 12 boxes from them, then you become a BFF, which means that every year, whenever they have like the book of the year uh, nominees, you get to pick one of the books to be sent to you for free if you are a BFF, which is amazing. They don't have to do that, and they do, and that's beautiful. However, they're not special editions. They do come with their own book of the month dust jacket, but they're not special editions. They're not anything crazy. What I do like is you can skip however many times you want, and you get to look at all of the genres and just kind of see what you'd like. All right, the next one is another one that I absolutely love because it's kind of like in the same vein as Book of the Month, but you have to be off the wait list to be a subscriber, I guess, and that is Midnight Whispers. Midnight Whispers is kind of similar to Book of the Month, but they only pick one book, and how they do it is if you are off the wait list and you are a subscriber per se, you will get an email on the first of the month, and they will give you kind of a description. It's vague. They don't tell you what book it is. They give you what the theme is and kind of the color scheme, and then you can go on, purchase the book that month, and then you'll get it later on. However, if you're like, I'm unsure because I don't know if I want to get that or I don't check Autumn Book Reads on Instagram and know what the book is, then I'm just going to wait until the middle of the month when they announce the book and then I'll sign up then. And the downfall to that is if you do that, a lot of times you will lose out on getting the book. Like the book this month um, sold out the first day. So if you do that, you're really going to cut your losses because you might miss out on a book that you really would want. But I like it that if you don't pay, if you don't go onto their website and say, I want the book, then you don't have to pay that month and you just go on to the next month. It's wonderful. I absolutely love it. I've been doing it for just a couple months and this month I did get the book. So I'm so excited until that comes in. But it's, you know, like I said, you're not paying a monthly charge where you have to constantly make sure, have I skipped it? Have I made sure that I'm not going to be charged this month? You only get charged if you actively go and do it. All right, the last book box company that I am subscribed to. Like I said, there are many, many more out there, so you can go and do some research and see if you want to subscribe to those. But the one that I'm going to talk about is Bookish Box. I am a huge Bookish Box fan. I know that they have issues. We're just going to go ahead and say that right now. I know that they have issues. Um, they are very behind. They never used to be. They don't update you nearly as often as they should or give you accurate shipping updates. However, I think they are starting to turn around. I think they are starting to get to where they are getting caught up because I just unboxed my January book at the beginning of May. So I think they're slowly but surely getting there, but that doesn't change the fact that it's left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. I personally have been around with them since 2018, whenever they didn't have issues. So I know that I'm going to get my money. I know that they're not scamming me. So I just wait it out. I don't normally worry about it too often. I mean, I waited almost two years for my bargain or replacement set to come in. And I wasn't even worried about it because I know that I'm going to get it. But let's talk about what they are. Bookish Box gives you, it used to be YA or adult books and you could do the book only, the book and goodies, or the book goodies and t-shirt. Now you can do a combo where you can do the YA and adult book only or the YA and adult book and goodies. You get my drift. Now they have rebranded at the beginning of the year so their YA book is net book box is now called 
bookish box and it is no longer YA it is strictly new adult romanticy that is exactly what it is new adult romanticy or adult romanticy there is no swaying in that which I'm absolutely happy about because I didn't want to cancel my YA book but um then their adult book is now the darkly box and that one is going to be ones that have more mature themes like you know you can get a dark romance or you could get a sports romance you could get a cowboy romance a lot of people misunderstood whenever they announced it that they thought it was going to be like a dark romance box and that's not what it is it is going to be more on the spicier side and it's going to have a mixed bag every single month you i think we're getting sports romances in august and we're getting a dark fantasy romance in june so it's a mixed bag and whenever you read the announcement i see where people got that it was like a dark romance but it just says on there these books will keep you reading well past into the dark. So it was just supposed to be like these books are gripping you. They're books you don't want to put down type of thing. So I feel like they do need to do a little bit of rebranding on that. However, I am a Darkly and Bookish Box subscriber, book only. I love their customizations. Let me see if I have one here. So they did Fortuna Sworn. This is the first one and you have the edges. And like I said, their customizations are just absolutely gorgeous. I got this a long time ago. I think it was like six months ago. But their customizations are just absolutely amazing. And they definitely are on par with Page and Wick and Arcane Society with how they do their things. Because then you have this. So, I mean, it's just beautiful. I absolutely love it. I have the first four books in this. I'm waiting for them to announce when they're going to finish the series. But, again, it, everything is subjective, right? It's how you perceive things, how you take things. Because it's just like reading. Some people will like this book. And then other people will say, I don't like that book because... You know, the writing's terrible or the world building's terrible, but then you look over to your friend and they're like, I ate this book up. What are you talking about? It is subjective. So my thoughts, my opinions are, of course, my own. So just don't take them to heart. Do your own research. But I wanted to give you guys a deep dive into what book box subscriptions I am subscribed to, which ones I no longer subscribe to, and give you a little bit of ideas on them because a lot of people have came to me over on Instagram asking what book box subscriptions do you suggest or you know which ones do you love the most and I love all of them in different ways for different reasons so if you are wanting a specific type of genre or specific type of um, book community then you know each one of these are going to offer you a whole lot of different things so definitely go check each and every one of the ones that really intrigued you out. And you can keep watching my book unboxings every single month so you can see what I'm getting and my thoughts. And maybe that will help you decide if you want to do that. Go join all the wait lists and then whenever you're off of it, you'll know if you want to subscribe or not. Because you don't pay until you actually subscribe. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts and everything. Please leave the comments below of your thoughts and your feelings and your opinions. But please just keep it very friendly because there we don't want any problems or anyone arguing in the comments. Please. This is a very loving place and we do not judge. So I hope you all have a great weekend. I have tried to film this video at least five times this week. I have been busy. I've had a migraine. I'm hoping that this video comes out good. If it doesn't, I apologize. Look forward to my next video. I tried to make it fun and engaging, 
But at this point, it's Friday night. It's supposed to be up tomorrow morning. And if I didn't do it now, I don't think there would have been a video tomorrow because I have been struggling um, with my headaches and with work. So I hope you enjoyed it, though, you guys. And you can always hit me up over on my Instagram, like I said. Join in on my Instagram stories. Give me feedback. Talk to me over there. Or leave me comments here. But I hope you all have a great weekend. Bye!